isang data here at Villarreal Jr. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction Data Warehousing Series. And our topic for today is about data warehouse features. Next is the data warehouse applications. And the third one is the type of data warehouse. Let's proceed with our first topic. Data warehouse features has its four key. The first one is the subject oriented. The second one we have is integrated, time variant, and the last is non-volatile. Now, these four key features of a data warehouse is considered to be transparent. You cannot remove one part of it because this four composes the data warehouse itself. Now, let's discuss one at a time what are those key features of a data warehouse. So the first one is the subject-oriented. A subject-oriented, which is considered uh, a data warehouse, because it provides information around a subject rather than the organization's ongoing operations. When we said organization's ongoing operation, that is uh, what they called operational database. Now, these subjects can be product, customers, suppliers, sales, revenue, etc. We mentioned on our previous uh, discussion that an operational database is very different from the data warehousing. Okay? Now, those, those words are considered to be part of being a subject-oriented because uh, as our example here, it is considered to be a product, a customer, a supplier, sales, and revenue. If we're going to analyze uh, who is uh, the customers or a customer that is considered to be good in our company, so we can get the, the output or the result in terms of query through customer that is the idea of the subject oriented and those subject oriented as we discuss is that all of it are included also on the operational databases okay and they have their relation to each and every one of the subjects now, a data warehouse does not focus on the ongoing operations. Rather, it focuses on modeling and analysis of data for decision making. So, when we said uh, modeling and analysis, the person we're going to analyze must uh, needed to be put up his or her analysis in terms of graph okay in terms of figure so that we can analyze each much more better okay now uh, the second one is the integrated and what do you mean by integrated in the data warehouse now, integrated right here is a constructed by integrating data from the data warehouse, which is considered to be heterogeneous sources or heterogeneous data, such as rational databases. Example, we have flat file. And what is 
uh, the reality of flat file in computer uh, we have spreadsheet the Microsoft Excel okay the those data there can be considered to be as flat file another is a notepad okay if you're going to use the notepad with the data inside of the notepad inserted or recorded then it is considered also as flat file and this flat file is considered to be the sources that's why it mentioned here this integration enhances the effect analysis of data and it's true so it means to say even though it is a flat file even though it is a database even though if it is a relational database it must be heterogeneous it must be the same they have the same value they have the same importance on the organization okay to make the decision more fruitful because it is integrated okay. so next slide we have here time variant so when we said time variant the data collected in a data warehouse is identified with a particular time period now the data in a data warehouse provides information from the historical point of view now as uh, we mentioned that the time variant considered to be how effective you gather data on a specific time okay and that must be generalized or must be looked through its historical point of the organization so for example um, we have employees is considered to be more employees but the sales is less under the history and we have a time that we have few employees but the sale is very generous and uh, that is what they call the historical point of view so and that is time variant okay on the history itself it identifies if there is a relation between uh, having uh, more customer with a low sales rather than uh, small uh, employees or customer with a high percentage of sales that is what we call time variant then the last we have here is non-volatile when we said non-volatile means the previous data is not erased when new data is added to it a data warehouse is kept separate from the operational database and therefore frequent changes in operational database is not reflected in the data warehouse but the uh, the true meaning of uh, non-volatile is that you cannot change it okay uh, non-volatile means it can be handled it can be seen you can you can look at it you can analyze it but again you cannot change it on the exact time you analyze the data but if there is a what do you call deletion uh, addition so deletion and addition again I mentioned about this it is a what do you call update and if we update it is a work of operational database and not 
the data warehouse itself. That's why if we go directly to the data warehousing, it identifies that we cannot gather data when there is an update on it because non-volatile because it mentioned non-volatile non-changing because we can query on it only we can when we said we can query we can view it only the result and the history of the data next so we have here in figure 6 data warehouse its characteristics so the key features of data warehouse are number one subject oriented number two integrated number three time variant and number four non-volatile so let's check it on the subject oriented it is specifies a figure of a, a human who is uh, cycling okay? riding a bike so what is the idea of this so when we said subject oriented what you are doing is precise if you are have a bike you can do only to ride on it and to make a cycle okay you cannot go to other part because that is only a cycle that is what you call the subject itself it talks only on how to bike now in number two that is what you call integrated so we'll, we have a figure of a bulb because if we integrate we can classify on it if we integrate we can identify we can sort on the data we can give importance of the data which is more important than the other the third one is a time variant which we have here is spoon and fork and it identifies that we need we have a breakfast so we have a lunch we have a dinner it is the same as in the data warehouse why because you have only a specific time to browse your data for the analysis if the data is on the transaction itself you cannot do data warehouse or data warehousing you cannot analyze on it that's why there is a what you call a specific time next we have the non-volatile which is non-changeable because every time uh, we save on it and we have our backup so that uh, we can make uh, such uh, concurrency it is not changeable okay so let's continue so note a data warehouse that not require transaction processing recovery and concurrency control because it is physically stored and separate from the operational database yes because that is the time you need to analyze the data but there is a what do you call processing recovery concurrency under update and this update cannot be done on a data warehouse it can be done operationally and physically okay uh, in a database So the next uh, topic we have, we are finished already with the data warehouse features and we have four. Next is the data warehouse application. Where are we going to use the data warehouse? How do we need to apply on it? So let's proceed. Data warehouse application, as discussed before, a data warehouse help business, executives, 
to organize, analyze, and use their data for decision making. So, if we're going to discuss decision, we have three ways. The first one is Do not go ahead. If you are not aware of your analysis, then do not go ahead. That is for the decision making. If you are aware, then you can go. And if something troubles you, think and go back again to analyze the data so we have only three decision making we need to make and this is not only on the data warehouse this is considered to be in life in personal decision in other decision because it has been studied already okay it is also used in a research that we need to have only three decision to make you can go ahead do not go ahead think again and go back to analyze the problem and its solution okay so hoping there is uh, what they call addition for your idea just in case if it is not been mentioned on other subjects that you encountered next we have a data warehouse serves as a sole part of a plan exec execute ac access close loop feedback system for the enterprise management plan execute access sorry so and that is what you call a close loop so this is what you call the sole part so it is important part of the data warehouse so if we're going to analyze a closed loop of uh, what it is closed loop is something like the The running application or organization that it is considered to be going back again okay until it is being corrected that is the idea of a closed loop okay so under the cycle if on the part one or level one you encountered error you encountered problem you cannot decide then you can have your closed loop or the plan execute assess okay under level one you can go back again there's a what you call feedback because there are series of cycle that at the end of the last part the feedback has been connected but in closed loop every level has its feedback so you can go back Okay, you can plan again, you can execute again, and you can assess. But there is a what you call uh, advantage and disadvantage of that. The disadvantage of that is that you have you need more plenty of time, okay, in a closed loop, rather than on the last end feedback. So you have a lesser time. So, since it is a company, so I suggest uh, it should be closed loop. Why? Because uh, every day there is a transaction. And every transaction, there is a, what you call a result. It could be possibly a failure, but it could be a possible a good output. So, let's have an example. 
just to identify plan execute assess which is considered to be a closed loop um, in a bank in a bank or something like uh, remittance uh, organization or agency if they have uh, short they are short okay the person inside of that are short then they are going to pay for that so if you don't want to pay and you, if you don't want to have a short in terms of money then you need to have a closed loop every time there is a changes for example another part of uh, the remittance employee goes in you need to ask plan execute and assess you need to count the money before going in and going out and that is what you call the closed loop Be that is a feedback because you don't want to pay for the deficit of the transaction now data warehouses are widely used in the following fields number one financial services number two banking services number three consumer goods number four retail sectors number five controlled manufacturing so that's why uh, there are many parts and this is considered to be crucial why because almost almost human right now have its financial status have its banking status they go for the consumer because they need to consume retail because they order okay and control manufacturing because those manufacturer needs to summarize update identify how many is their product and how many is considered to be uh, sell that is the idea next so we are finished now with the data warehouse feature data warehouse application now let's go now to the last topic types of data warehouse so data warehouse has uh, three types And we have on the following below. The first one is the information processing. The second one is the analytical processing. The third one is the data mining. So there's a what you call information, analytical, data mining. The information and analytical having a connected word of processing when we said processing it is an action okay so here we have figure 7 identifies types of data warehouse application so where is uh, data mining you can look at here under users where is analysis okay we have here under user so that is the idea now reporting also is right here because this is the three analytical reporting and mining okay if we're going to go back information that is reporting analytical and data mining that's it okay so reporting is information why because if it is been printed you can it can be considered to be as information with signature who's the author of it it is an information so right here it is more clearly that after the data warehouse the user can analyze inform and mine okay that is the idea so let's define 
information processing under types of data warehouse. A data warehouse allows to process the data stored on it. The data can be processed by means of querying, basic statistical analysis, reporting using cross tabs, tables, charts, or graph. Okay? So that is what you call information. So it can be considered to be printed. Okay? It can be considered to be a hard copy and a soft copy printed because you, you cannot uh, have the information without the data now uh, the second one is analytical processing a data warehouse supports analytical processing of the information stored in it the data can be analyzed by means of basic OLAP operations including slice and dice, drill down, drill up, and pivoting. So, this analytical processing can be identified only if you are connected to internet. Why? Or, you are connected to a network if the company doesn't have internet. Why? Because you cannot query the data in the relational database or on the operational database itself. So, you are connected, you have your computer, you have your printer, so that all information processing is that you can gather on it, okay, to analyze. Remember, the figure I mentioned is from information because there is a what they call reporting. But if there is already a reporting, then there is what they call analysis of the reporting. Now, you cannot do that without analytical processing or network or internet on the company. Because we are talking here of system. When we said system, it is a computer system. Okay, so remember the word slice and dice, drill down, drill up, and pivoting. These are all in the data structure and algorithm. So if you have your data structure and algorithm, you can do this. Okay. Uh, it is a when we said algorithm it is one of the technique for data structure it's one of the technique that you can use how to interpret data clearly and scientifically the third one we have here the data mining the data mining supports knowledge discovery by finding hidden patterns and associations, constructing analytical models, performing classification and prediction. Now, this mining result can be presented using the visualization tools. Now, it identifies here that the information processing is the first we needed to get after that we can analyze on it if we analyze on the data we gathered in the information you want changes you want modification in your analysis then therefore you can go to data mining so in data mining, it is something like a puzzle. They are associated. Okay? They, it meant to say associated. You can go to the right. You can go to the left. You can go to the something like uh, top. You can analyze. Now, there is what you call models we have in data mining. 
so we can also sort we can index then the last one in data mining is the prediction after you analyze it all and you, if you want to move something like classification you need to sort on the data that is part of a data mining uh, you, you enumerate the importance of data under its subject that is also the same as data mining so that we can predict what would be happen what would happen in the future on the organization okay so on our validation board we are finished with the data warehouse feature we are also finished with the data warehouse applications and the type of data warehouse congratulations you successfully finished our lecture number three thank you and good luck